All right, so we're basically going to do um, the pre-pilates work, which is strengthening of um, the core, finding your neutral, um, breathing. So we're really gonna start with our breath, and then we're gonna go into finding our neutral. We're gonna go through how to stabilize it, doing the exercises that we've been doing for quite some time now, trying to just basically strengthen our inner core and bringing it out to a more outer unit uh, part of our core. Anyway, so that's why I told you guys that if you want to, you can bring a large roller, okay? And we, you can be able to challenge yourself. For those of you who have been doing this for a while and you know how it goes, and then if you have an extra rolled up map, we can use it for several things as well. And then we have the balls, but if you have a flat ball, okay, and it has to be a bit elastic because this is what we're gonna put under the pelvis if you need it, okay? These are kids' toys balls. So we have these around. If you don't have it, totally fine. Um, you can do all the exercises without needing to use them, okay? All right, so this is pretty safe for everybody, but still, anybody that has any neck, shoulder, uh, issues, any back problems, any bone issues, be very careful. Uh, most of these are okay for you to do, but I'll try to take you through them in case I feel like it's not appropriate. And if you're going to bring things under your head, whenever we do the bridges or anything with a bit more inversion, remember you need to remove them out of the head. All right, so let's get ready. We're gonna start with breathing. Okay, I'm gonna bring, keep all the toys around me here. All right, so sitting position, if you need to put anything under your pelvis, go ahead and do that. So if you need to elevate to sit a little bit higher, go for it. Cross the legs, again, if you wanna do your breath here, and if you'd rather do your breath here, that's also fine, all right? So I'm gonna start with sitting with my legs crossed. Find one position for the leg that's, that's comfortable. Make sure you find the tip of your sit bones. If we need to remove a little bit of flesh, we can remove. Roll the shoulders back and then once you find the position of the pelvis and, the, and you're sitting right over your sit bones, we're going to shift the ribs maybe back a little bit more to try to stack the rib cage over the pelvis. And the front alignment will be your bottom ribs um, stacked right over your hip bones, okay? The front hip bones here. Now, if you have too much pressure on the hip flexors, this is where you probably want to sit a little higher, okay? And then... The head is going to maybe shift back. If your neck is tight and you shift it forward and you're trying to align the head right around the middle of the rib cage. Okay, shoulders relax, lengthen your neck and just breathe, just regular breaths for now and try to calm your body into this, this, this position. So we're gonna do about three, four breaths. And try to get the breath to the entire torso. And we're trying to minimize any breath that's just shallow here to the chest where you're lifting the rib cage just front and back, okay? Now, let's take your breath a little bit more just towards the belly. So we're going to do belly breathing or we call diaphragmic breathing as well. So bring your hands to the belly and we're gonna try to fill the belly with air, pushing your hands forward. Okay, I'm gonna give you a side view of this. So on your breath in, send your breath deep down towards the, the bottom of your torso and try to expand the abdominals. Forward, and then breathe out, push the air out. Okay, in the meantime, your back doesn't change. So as you breathe in, there should be no change here as you breathe out. There should be no change here. Also here, if you're breathe, breathing shallow, you're gonna have a shift forward of the rib cage, which you don't want, and no arching as you breathe. So just to here, expanding with no changes on that stacked spine. And out. Now, you can breathe into the nose. Breathe out with pursed lips. Blowing a candle far in front of you. Nice, breathing in, really engage 
Engage now the abdominals to try to push the air out. So breathing into the belly, breathing out, push. So bring your belly button all the, all the way back to your spine, <sighs> expelling that air out. If you prefer to breathe out from your nose, you can. Turn your camera off, please, and your mic off, Mima. Camera off and mic off. What? I need you to turn your camera off and your mic off. Okay. Okay, so engage the abdominals even deeper, really pressing the air out into from the mouth or the nose if you prefer. Okay, so last two. Last one. So you see here, there's not much movement. There should be a little bit of movement, but I'm not lifting everything. Okay, so now from here, we're going to move into rib breathing. So now I want you to send your breath to the back of the ribs and try to expand your rib cage out to the side. And then on the breath out, just push the air out again from the belly. And then hug your ribs back in. So again, the breath should go to the back of your rib cage. You're trying to expand this area. Side of ribs and maybe now front of ribs. On the breath out, pull the belly in. Hug the ribs back in. You shouldn't be able to see much here. But make sure when you're breathing, you're not rounding. Here we're also not extending. Nothing is changing on your spine. Breathing in, expanding the back of the ribs and side. And then the front also opens up. Breathe out. Keep your shoulders relaxed. Make sure we're not really stressing the shoulders. So keep trying to send the breath to the back of the ribs. If you need to put your hand there, put your hand there and send the breath to the back of the hands. And then expand this rib cage out. Pull the belly in. Bring the ribs back in. Hug. Keep going. Give me two to three more. Okay, and you're still going, rib, rib, and then the whole torso. So let's get the imagery of that umbrella opening. So we're gonna start the umbrella opening when you breathe to the back and side, and also to the front. The whole umbrella, your rib cage looks like an umbrella, opens up a little bit, and then you pull that umbrella back in and you close it. Lengthen that spine when you, when you breathe in. On the breath out, pull the belly, and pull, okay? So this is a uh, full uh, rib breathing. Now, we're gonna go to single rib breathing. I'm gonna show you here what it looks like sitting, which is a little bit harder to get, and then we're gonna go into laying on the side to figure out how it goes. So here, if I try to breathe, this is my right lung, so reflecting it would be your left. So on my right side, if I try to breathe just to one side, Usually we're breathing to both, but you can try to get the side to move a little bit more. It would look like this. And then I breathe out, pull it back in. Okay, then I can breathe to my left. My left is a little harder. And I pull it back in. So it's not my arm moving up and down, it's actually my rib, okay? Right? Left. If you want to try, go for it, yeah? Okay? Now, to make this a little bit easier, let's do a side flexion 
You can keep going if you're still trying to do one side at a time. From here, we can lift the arm up, shift the rib a little bit and do that very gentle side flexion. So now we're opening this whole side up. Remember when we do the side stretch, I always tell you, breathe through your rib. This is what we try to do. So in this position, try to open up that rib and try to breathe here and try to feel that your ribs are going opening when you breathe in and closing as you breathe out. So now you're sending your breath up towards that top rib. And relax on the breath out. So look at how my body just expands when I breathe. So as I breathe in, I'm gonna reach a little further, but I'm not pushing, I'm just breathing. I just open through my breath and then I stay here. Try to hug this side a bit more. Breathe in and I'm gonna reach a little bit more. This is just through opening up and lengthening. Breathe out, I close this side a bit more. One more. Good, relax your shoulders. Breathe in and come back. Other ways to do this breath. So I asked you to get a rolled up mat or pillows. If you have a pillow or two, you can put it under the side that was flexing. Okay, you can support yourself here to elevate the rib cage a little bit and bring this arm up and over. The bottom arm can support your head if you need to. The knees are bent just to keep your back relaxed. From here, you're going to breathe into the rib the same. Now, if you don't have a pillow, if you're there with pillows, keep going. You can use a ball, put under the ribs, same thing, support the head, breathe here. We're just trying to shift and elevate the ribs to open up the side. If you have a ruler, okay, this might be a little too hard. You might want to put some padding and you can be here, breathing to the ribs, same thing. Okay, so this will help open up this whole side. So prop yourself, so I'm gonna do a few breaths in that position. And if you have an extra rolled up mat, same thing, okay? So you can put it under you and you can open. So the idea is for you to be laying down in this position. Pick what's appropriate for you, okay? And let's try to breathe. So I'm gonna go back to the pillows because maybe most of you will have pillows because we're all home, okay? So we can put the pillow, support the hand. So now, knees are bent in front of you and the arm is gonna go up and over. What I want you to do with this hip is just reach it longer. Now, as you breathe in, remember, you're breathing up here. So try to open up the rib. Breathe out, just relax. Breathe in. As you open up the rib, try to also lengthen this so you get more opening through the body. Breathe in. Reach the hip down, reach the arm up, breathe out. This feels amazing. Let's do two more. Keep your spine lengthened so your tailbone is reaching really long, not to the wall behind you, just long. Keep the same alignment that we had when we were laying, sitting down. Okay. And I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna switch to the other side. If this is your tight side, stay there and keep breathing to that side, you okay? Now, pillows come back to this side or whatever you have, the ball, the roller, the rolled up mat. And again, you want your rib to be right on top, you okay? So if you have the roller, you're gonna be much higher. If this is too uncomfortable for you, just grab pillows, okay? So this is much more lateral flexion here. So I have my back straight, my knees bent, my arm goes up and over. Let me go back into the screen, okay? And same thing, so breathing into the rib, opening, arm reaches, and then the hip reaches the other direction. I'm gonna do six, I'm gonna assume we did about six on the other side. Okay, keep lengthening that body, reach, walk your arms back a little bit more. There's no stress on the shoulder, it's relaxed. Four. Walk the hands if you're released, okay? But make sure your rib, the hips are not going up, they're going down and away, last one. 
very slowly come up. If you need to stay there, stay. I know this is amazing. Okay, so any of those toys, okay, can be used to do that lateral breathing. It's really good if you have any deviation on your spine, scoliosis. You want to lay down to where your tight side is lifted up. Okay, and you're trying to open it. Even if you have imbalances, I have, so my right side is really tight. So for me, keeping my right side up and breathing to it is really, really good. Okay, so whenever we do these lateral flexions now, we'll be able to breathe and open up the sides a little bit more with that breath. All right, it's fantastic to just stay there, breathe and try to just relax and open up the body, the side of the body, okay? All right, so from here, we're going to move into the back. So I'm gonna lay you guys on the back and we're gonna try these breaths on the back and then we're gonna start going into more neutral pelvis, how to find it in that position. All right, so let's lay on the back, okay? Any position that you want. Remember, you can support your head with pillows. So if you have to bring anything under the head to keep your neck relaxed, go ahead and do it. From here, so we're gonna adjust the body, okay? We have the toes the, facing forward, the heels aligned with your sit bones. Then you have the middle of the knees with your hip bones, pubic bone coming up, aligned with sternum, aligned with nose, okay? Shoulders pulling away from the ears. I like to keep my elbows slightly bent because I'm tight. If you want to, you can reach the scapula and the arms down and lengthen the neck away from your shoulders, okay? Whatever is comfortable for you. Let's take the breath here. So, we're going to melt chest and ribs, stay relaxed there, and try to breathe through your belly here. Breathe in, expand the belly, breathe out, pull the belly button in. Breathe in. And now, so we're not trying to arch anything to breathe, just melt a little bit and breathe. We haven't found our neutral, so just relax here. Okay, one more, breathing into the belly, expanding, breathing out, releasing. Okay, so notice that I'm not breathing to the ribs, I'm not breathing to the upper chest and extending the back to breathe, no. So if you feel you're doing that, put your hand on the chest, put your hand on the ribs, Stabilize, try to calm them down and send the breath deeper down to your belly. Okay, so there will be a little bit of movement here, but it's not your primary mover. It's just expanding and lifting, and then it comes down with the belly, okay? Okay, so now let's try to send the breath, the breath to your back into the side of the ribs. If you can bring your hands here, fine. If not, that's fine. Try to send your breath to the back of the ribs and feel the back of the ribs pressing into the mat gently. And then expand the ribs out to the side and breathe out, belly in, ribs go down. Breathing in. So you should see some movement on the front of my ribs, but not as much movement on my belly. Right? Keep breathing to the back and side of the ribs. Expand back, expand side. And now you should feel this also expanding in the front of the body, but there's no movement on the spine. So we're not moving this way to breathe. You're just lengthening. Two more. Good. All right, we're not doing the side breathing here. Now from this position, let's find our breath. So two fingers inside your hip bone, bring it inside, press just inside of your hip bones, and we're gonna try to activate that deep core with the breath. So let's try to breathe side and uh, back and side of ribs first. On the breath out, pull the belly button in away from your fingers and hug your rib cage. Again, breathe in, breathe out, pull the belly button in. So now let's fall the glass. 
very gently, about 25 to 30 percent effort, pull that belly in. Okay, you can also breathe with pursed lips and blow a candle very far, but very gentle. It's nice long breaths. It's not a okay. So it's a and feel the abdominal wall sinking down and coming to the midline of the body. Okay, keep breathing back inside of ribs and now very gentle away from your fingers, away from your fingers, but you should feel some tightening happening. Now, let's imagine we're bringing the hip bones towards the belly button as you breathe out. Okay, and now try to also activate the ribs. So as you breathe in, expand, breathe out, and at the end of your breath, you should be hugging the bottom ribs and your waistline. So pull the waistline and the ribs also gently to the midline of the body. So we're zipping from belly button to ribs. Now we're gonna start from pubic bone with the pelvic floor as well. Last one. Okay, so we should feel uh, that tightening here. So let's bring the imagery of the corset. We're trying to bring, to tighten a corset, which would be your whole torso. So from pubic bone around the waist, all the way to the ribs, imagine that you're wearing a corset and we're trying to tighten the corset inwards as you breathe out, okay? Let's do one last one with the imagery of the corset. Breathing in, back side of ribs, so we're releasing that corset, and then when we breathe out, you're going to sink, pulling hip bones together, pulling waistline together, pulling ribs together, and zipping that corset from pubic bone all the way up here to your esophagus, to the top of, to the rib area here, okay? Now, let's bring in the pelvic floor to add to our deep core work. So we've been working basically the diaphragm, the transversus abdominis too on the breath out, and the multifidi in the back as well, which is back muscle. Now let's bring, bring in the pelvic floor. So we're gonna try to contract the pelvic floor in and up, okay? Um, I'm gonna start you back up in a sitting position, sorry. So let's go back to a sitting position. If you remember which leg was crossed, change the cross position of your legs, all right? Let's sit here, okay, and let's do the pelvic floor from here because here we have gravity working against us. It's a little bit more work. All right, so in this position, we have the pelvic floor attached inside our pelvis from sit bone to sit bone, from pubic bone to tailbone. So in this position, we're gonna try to bring the pelvic floor in. So we're gonna try to bring your sit bones together so try to imagine you bring your sit bones together. Don't squeeze your butt. It has nothing to do with the outer muscles that we're trying to squeeze. Imagine you're trying to hold yourself from going to the bathroom. So we're trying to pull in sit bone to sit bone and then lift up. And then you release on the breath in, completely release it. Breathe out, try to pull the pelvic floor off the mat. So these are your kegels as well. Pull the sit bones together and try to lift it. And release, okay? So if you wanna imagine also that you're trying to zip jeans tight, you, you, have, you stepped on cold water and you're going like this, you can also, also try to feel that. So keep pulling from sit bone to sit bone. Last one, sit bone to sit bone, pull, 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 pull towards the middle. Now lift, lift, lift all the way up to the pubic bone, maybe to the belly button. Okay, now we're gonna change. We're gonna go now from pubic bone to sit, to tailbone. So from the front pubic bone all the way to the tailbone, I want you to try to bring those two points together. It's a little different and lift them. Okay, and again, try to keep your sit, you're sitting right on top of your sit bones. You really need to be squared here with your pelvis, otherwise you're gonna feel different things. Okay, if you're tilted back, you're gonna feel the back more. If 
arch forward, maybe the front more. So let's bring pubic bone to tailbone. Try to engage that. So now you should, feeling, should be feeling a little bit more work here to the pubic bone to tailbone. Lift, 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 and release. And again, try to pull. Keep your back stacked over the pelvis, spine lengthened, and feel that pull. So some of you may feel it from the front more, from the back more. Okay, now let's try to bring all four points together. So the sit bones come together and the pubic bone and the tailbone come together. So think of the four points meeting in the center. Lift them up, bring it up, hold it if you can, and release. Some of you may be feeling a pull on the back. It's good, it's not bad. Again, so try to bring the four points together. Make sure again that your pelvis is really stacked, okay? So you're on top of your sit bones, not roll back. If you need to sit up on something high, go ahead. Sit bones, pubic bone, tailbone to the middle and up. It's a very gentle contraction. Don't feel like it feels like, a, like you're doing crunches and your rectus is working. It's really gentle. So make sure that if you're contracting, that you're also completely releasing. Okay? This is very good for people with incontinence. If we're sneezing and coughing, we're having a little splash going on. This is really good exercise for you. Okay? Just make sure that your doctor is okay with you doing this. Post-pregnancy, this is really important as well. All right, so if that's okay, let's transfer that to the back. So we're gonna lay down again and we're gonna take this exercise. Okay, so from here, we're going to bring those sit bones together, pubic bone and then in, in tail bone pulling in. We're gonna lift that pelvic floor in this position. You should feel more of a contraction here. Okay, we don't have gravity to pull up against and then release it completely. Breathe out, we're gonna pull pelvic floor. So sit bones to sit bones, pubic bone to tailbone. Okay, the pubic bone to tailbone is the one that we really wanna work a lot to because I want you to feel the engagement about the pubic bone area. And from there, we're gonna continue the activation of our deep core. So let's, uh, let's get that going. Breathing into the back and side of your rib cage. Breathing out, let's pull that pelvic floor up. Let's think of pubic bone to tailbone. Feel the engagement around the pubic bone area. Lift it to the belly button. <sighs> hug the waist, hug the ribs. Breathe into the back and side of the ribs. Breathe out, pull that pelvic floor. Sink the pubic bone and belly button. <sighs> hug the hips and the ribs. Okay, now again, if you wanna bring your fingertips in, make sure that you're sinking everything and lifting. You're not pushing your abdominals to the ceiling. That's the exact opposite of what we wanna do. And again, remember it's super gentle. And you should be feeling that full corset working from your pubic bone all the way up to about where your esophagus is, okay? Back, breathing, pelvic floor, sink the pubic bones, sink the abdominals gently, bring your hip bones together, bring your waistline together, bring your ribs together, that's your full breath. One last one, back and side, pull the pelvic floor gently, sink, hug, hips, hip bones, waist, ribs, and release. Okay, so that's our breath, woo, okay. So that's a long time to do breath, but now we know how to activate that deep core maybe a little bit better. Now, we're gonna use this to find our neutral. So we're gonna tip the pelvis forward and back now using those deep abdominal muscles. So I want you to imagine that we have a bowl of water between the pubic bone and the upper part here. Let's say between the pubic bone and the belly button. So right here, when you breathe out, I need you to activate that deep core we just found and I want you to spill water towards the belly. So you're gonna pull your pubic bone to your belly button, spill water towards the top of your abdominals here, and push your low back into the mat. 
I don't want your butt to be working. I need that deep core we found to do that. Now, we're gonna bring that bowl back to neutral. So just release the pelvis on a breath in. Again, breathe into the back and side of the ribs. Breathe out, pull that pelvic floor, and then scoop the abdominals. Tip the pubic bone towards the belly button to push the low back into the mat, or tip that bowl into the upper belly, spilling water here. Breathe in, let's pick everything back up, and let's do it one last time. Breathe in, back and side, breathe out, pull the pelvic floor gently, sink the abdominals. Tilt that pubic bone towards the belly button, push the low back on the mat and spill water towards the belly. And lengthen the spine back to neutral. Now we're gonna tip the bowl towards our toes. So we're gonna be working our low back muscles to arch the low back and tip forward. On a note, Chest and ribs will not move off the mat when you do this, so make sure your rib cage stays anchored. Let's put one hand here, make sure it doesn't move. We have the bowl, holding the bowl with one other hand here. Breathe in, lengthen your tailbone and your pubic bone and the spine as much as you can. On the breath out, imprint, pull that pubic bone to belly button. On the breath in, lengthen the spine to neutral. Now we're gonna continue breathing in and lengthening the spine, tipping the bowl and the pubic bone down towards our toes. The ribs don't go, it's just a small arch of your low back. Feel that both sides of your spine are working even. If not, the side that's not working even, keep lengthening that side until it's even with the opposite side. Lengthen and tip forward, lengthen. If they're now even, breathe out. Scoop the pelvic floor and belly button. Pull the pubic bone in and up, up, up. Let's spill water towards the belly. Pull that pubic bone all the way to belly button. Imprinted working abdominal muscles. So now your hip bones have come closer to the ribs, your pubic bone closer to belly button, and your low back it should be fully on the mat. Breathe in, keep your ribs stable. Lengthen the spine. Tip that bowl of water between the legs. Pubic bone tips forward towards the toe. Ribs don't move, just a tiny bit. Keep lengthening. Breathe into the belly when you do this. Now, if you can't feel both sides the same, like me, I cannot. My right side is overworking. I'm gonna lengthen my left and I'm gonna keep lengthening until I feel both sides working evenly or as even as possible. Now I scoop my belly and I imprint again. So scoop. Tip the pubic bone and the hip bones up towards the rib and the belly button, imprint. Breathe in, take it the other direction. Lengthen, lengthen. Remember how that weaker side feels lengthening? So start lengthening from now. Reach, pull, imprint. So keep going at your own breath. Scoop the deep abdominals to imprint. Breathe in, lengthen, arch, and tip. Breathe out, scoop, imprint. Lengthen, arch, and reach. Stay there, keep going. For those who have a ball and you, you can work more flexion and extension, meaning you can round the back more and arch more, you may use a ball here. Okay, this is gonna give you more mobility only if it's appropriate for your hip, pelvic area, um, and low back. So you can push the ball away, you can arch and pull the ball in. Okay, this is gonna give you a lot more mobility if that's what you're looking for. If not, don't. This is pretty extreme for people with some back and pelvis issues, okay? So if you don't have this, that's fine. Just keep doing, doing what we were doing here. Okay, we're gonna stop. So relax the spine. You should feel that your spine should be in a much nicer position, a neutralist position. But I'm going to continue this movement because this is one of my favorite exercises called pelvic clock. We're going to now release the or move, mobilize the pelvis side to side, okay? but I need you to put your hand on your waist and lengthen both waistlines as much as you can. Lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. So both sit bones are reaching forward and the waist is long. 
This here, the side of the, wa the waist where your ribs and your hips are, I don't want the side to shorten in this exercise. They need to keep the same distance. We're now going to reach the, the hip bones up to ceiling and the other one down. So this is the movement we're going to do, not this movement, okay? It's not up and down this way. So lengthen, keep your pelvis in whatever position it found, and let's squeeze your right butt, lift your right hip straight up to the ceiling, and it's not a big movement, look, stay there. The left side, press it down to the ground. So we're doing squeeze and lift on the right, press, push into the ground on the left. Stay here. The right knee should also be reaching up. The legs should not be collapsing and the ribs are not moving. Bring that hip down and release. Left side, lengthen the left waist, squeeze the left butt and lift that hip onto the ceiling. Now the right one goes down to the ground. Stay here, ribs don't move, knees don't move, except the left knee has shifted up a little bit more. Now stay there, let's do it again. Squeeze and lift more and press down more. Same side. Now take your hands to the waist and make sure the waistline is really long. Again, squeeze and lift and drop and come back to neutral. Let's switch sides, hands on waist, lengthen. Squeeze, right butt, lift, press the left side down. Stay here for three breaths. Squeeze and lift. Press the other side down. Stay long through the waist. Squeeze and lift. Press the opposite side down and back down. Let's now alternate. Oh, sorry, let's do one more to the left. So squeeze and lift. Down, lift, down. Keep your ribs still and just the pelvis is moving. Down and let's lift right side and hold. Okay, left side down. Bring it down. Left side up, right side down. Okay, so your pelvis should be doing this, okay? In the same plane of motion. So you're going up and down, not this way, but this way. Keep going. So hands on waist is fine to keep your pelvis still. Knees don't shake side to side, and the ribs are not moving, neither are your shoulders, just the pelvis. So squeeze and lift, pull. So you should feel if you started kind of tight on your SI joint that it's moving a little bit. If it's hurting you and it's not, you're not comfortable, don't do it, stop it, okay? This will move your SI joint a bit and the, and the pelvic area, not comfortable for everybody. Stop if you feel pain. All right, so mine is a little bit more mobile. There we go, good. Let's release the pelvis again. So you should feel that your pelvis is beginning to find a more neutral position. It's not too arch, it's not totally imprinted, it's kind of getting happier. Now, we're gonna move the four corners we just worked. We worked pubic bone to belly button, belly button to pubic bone, and we worked, we worked the hips up and down. Now we're gonna draw a circle. So we're gonna start imprinting here. So you're gonna breathe out, scoop pelvic floor abdominals, bring your pubic bone to belly button, imprint. From this position, we're gonna do a quarter circle to your right. So you're gonna roll, imagine you have a plate behind you, and you're gonna round the pelvis around the rim of that plate all the way to the right side. Right side is down, left side has gone up. Okay, now from here, we're gonna round around that plate. So we're gonna do another quarter turn from the right hip to pubic bone. Round and arch, arch, arch. Now your pubic bone is forward and the low back is arched, okay? The ribs may go up a little bit, but you're not arching from the rib cage. Breathe out, go from the pubic bone to the left side, so roll around that half dish. Stay there, lift the right butt up, press the left one down, and now quarter circle back to starting position at the belly button. So we're drawing a circle around the pelvis. It's called a pelvic clock because you're gonna imagine you have a clock behind your pelvis. Starting at 12 o'clock, we're imprinting. Now move the pelvis one o'clock to the right, two o'clock to the right, three o'clock is your right hip bone. And keep going to pubic bone is six. So we're gonna go four, move five. Now you're arched and you're at six. You're gonna go to nine on the left hip bone. So go seven, eight, nine. Now we're dropping the left and lifting the right. And we're going back to 12. 
eight, sorry, 10, 11, 12, go back to imprint. So do that on your own twice. Breathe in to start going to the right side and forward. Breathe out to come back from the arched back and pubic bone back to imprint. So left and imprint is breath out. Breathe in, going to the right and forward. Breathe out, left and down. One more. And left and down. Hold it. Reverse. To the left. Let's get that clock reversed. Or, if that's too complicated, dessert dish plate behind the pelvis. So from imprint, we're going to go left. 11, 10, 9, which is your left hip bone, the right goes up. We're going to go down. 8, 7, arching forward. 6, feel both sides of the back working the same. Breathe out. Five, four, three, right hip on down, left up, two, one, back to 12. Okay, so keep that movement. Let's do two or three more. So to the left, breathe in to go from top around to the left, forward, both sides of the spine working. Breathe out, imprint from the right all the way back, one more. So make it fluid if you can. Round and round. It's from the pelvis. If the ribs float, it's because it's following the movement. Try to keep it relaxed and on the mat. Okay, don't move the knees with you. Last one. Wow, this feels great. For those who have been sitting all day, this is awesome. Okay, release. Now you should be even happier. If you released, we should pretty much be in our neutral. Okay, so let's find neutral. Tailbone sacrum should be on the mat. Your whole pelvis should be anchored on the mat. Your low back should be very gently hovering off the mat in this area. The ribs are on the mat. The scapulas or your shoulder blades should be on the mat. Good. And the back of the head should be on the mat, right in the center. If you're not there, adjust. If you feel like you're overarching, we've been doing it. So if you feel there's too much work going on in your low back, go into a more imprint. And then you should find some work here too. Now in neutral, you should feel that your back is a bit working somewhat and your front is somewhat working. They're both engaged. Okay, let's do a couple of breaths here without changing your neutral. I want to remind some of you that needed to use the sponge, roll the sponge and put it under your back and leave it there. Okay, so that's going to be a supported neutral. We're going to do two breaths. Breathe out, pelvic floor, same thing with abdominals, lift, but there's no movement on pelvis, right? No movement on pelvis, we found our neutral. Good, we're going to start to exercise in here. So hands on the mat and we're going to work the core. So we're going to start with marches. I'm going to start you off with the exercise. For those of you here with no props, keep going and then I'm going to show people with props. We're going to breathe out, stabilize. Breathe in, float the right leg up. No movement on the pelvis or the back. Breathe out, scoop the abdominals, those with the sponge, press into the sponge and relax the leg down. Again, right leg, breathe, I'm gonna do it on four breaths for those who feel the breathing in is too hard. Breathe out, stabilize, quick breath in. Breathe out, hold the core and float the leg up. You're gonna hold it up here, take a very short breath into the ribs only. Don't let the belly pop too high. Breathe out, first scoop the abdominals, keep your back stable and pressing towards the ground, and then the leg releases down, and you take another breath in here. So that's four breaths, moving only on the breath out if you need more stability. Left leg, the whole movement. Breathe out, stabilize, breathe in, float, no movement. If you need to put your hands behind your pelvis to make sure there's no shifting, do that. Breathe out, press, scoop the abdominals, relax the leg down. So if you're shifting, you should feel that there's weight moving away from your hands. You wanna keep even weight. Now, you're going to breathe out, move the leg up, 
quick breath in, breathe out, hold the abdominals, push the spine into the mat, release down, okay? Keep going, either four breaths or two breaths. Keep the hand here, make sure you're not shifting heavier into the hands. People with props, if you have a roller, you can do all the coming exercises on your roller. It's more advanced, so if you're not ready for that, don't. Sit on the very front of the roller, hands on the ground, roll back, and you can do your marches here. I'm a little crooked. So hands will be on the ground, and you're gonna have to work your core much harder to stay stable. Try to use as little as hands as possible. As you start feeling stability, try to even float the arms off the ground. For those who have done roller classes with me, you know what I'm talking about. So keep the hands for now and use it as much as you can, okay? Keep going if that's what you wanna do. For people with balls, take the ball under the sacrum, so make sure it's really even and that you're in neutral on the ball. You're not posteriorly tilted, so you're not like this and you're not arched. You're actually neutralish, okay? So it's on the sacrum. Now, from here, it's the same thing. So you have instability under you, which means you have to work the core harder as you march, okay? Pick whatever you want, and if you don't have it, no problem, we're gonna keep doing it without it. All right, so let's end our marches, okay? And you're gonna relax down. Now, we're gonna go into toe tap, so we're gonna start working harder. Breathe out, imprint, if you have a sponge, imprint. We're gonna march one leg up at a time, 90 degrees. Imprint again, bring the other leg up. We're hip width apart. We don't have the legs together on this one. Arms on the ground, push the spine on the ground. So I want you to give me two imprints before we move. Chest and ribs down, breathe out, imprint. Very short breath to the ribs, breathe out, imprint. Connect your hips and your ribs as much as you can. This connection will stay, breathe out. Imprint, keep this connection, don't change it. This leg relaxes down. Only as far as you can. Bring it back up, and again, breathe out. So remember our soft, scooping breath, okay? If you need more support, knees come back, and then you move from here. So the knee closer to you will help you keep your back on the mat. Knees away from you is more challenging. Breathe out, scoop and imprint. Don't tighten the abs too much. Remember to scoop it in as much as you can. I don't wanna see this. Push the abdominals to the wall. No, scoop. It's coming down. Not pushing up. If you wanna keep your fingertips here, do it and move the belly away from your fingers. Do one more to each side. These are no kid, no joke. If you're tired, hug the knees. Stay there. Last one. Good, hug your knees. If you're on the roller, just relax the legs down. If you're on the ball, just relax the legs down. Good. So we're gonna go into crunches, okay? We're gonna go into regular crunches from here. So now that was very, just deep core stability work. So we're working lumbar pelvic stability on those two exercises. Now we're gonna go into moving and working through the upper area a little bit more and mobility on the thoracic upper spine. Arms, so feet are on the ground. If you're on the roller and the ball, you can keep going, just find neutral and keep it, okay? Arms are gonna go to ceiling. You may support your head if that's better for you. You can keep your arms down if there's any shoulder or neck issues going on. Otherwise, we have shoulders down, arms to ceiling. Actually, I'm gonna start here for the beginners. Tuck your chin, lengthen the back of the neck, okay? You're not crunching this. You're just gently holding a very soft peach between your chin and your chest. Keep the back of the neck as long as possible and reach the arms forward. Keep your pelvis as neutral as possible. Breathe out, we're gonna scoop, look. And then you're gonna roll the head and the shoulders. This keeps scooping, it doesn't pop to the ceiling. Do you see the difference? This, not this. 
and then we roll back down. Again, breathe in, tuck the back of the, tuck the chin gently, lengthen the back of the neck. If you're looking up towards your wall, middle of your wall or wall to ceiling, hold the peach and keep holding it. Breathe out, first we sink this, then we roll the head, and then we drag the ribs to continue rolling the head and shoulders. We don't lose the peach, we look between the legs. Don't shift the head forward, keep it back, holding the peach closer to the neck. Breathe in or out, lengthen the spine, lengthen the spine, keep your arms reaching forward to help you. Again, scoop, lift, really drag the ribs to lift the head and shoulders. And now, breathe in, tuck your chin, lengthen the back of the neck, breathe out, scoop, and glide the rib cage to lift the head and the shoulders. Push the back of the ribs into the mat to help you lift more. And roll down, very controlled. Two more, tuck the chin, lengthen, breathe out, scoop, glide, lift, and then you're always rolling down, very controlled. So control, 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 okay? So these are our crunches. You can keep going as I talk. Your, heads could be, your hand could be here, it's the same movement. And notice that I have tried not to move my pelvis, which means I'm not doing this to crunch, okay? I'm keeping it still, especially for those with any back issues, Keep it as stable as possible. If you need to keep pushing into that sponge, you can push it into the sponge, but we're trying not to do this, okay? We're just working here. Very good, relax down, relax the shoulders. So now we went forward and back. Now we're gonna do add a little rotation and do diagonal presses. So I'm gonna start rotating to you. I'm gonna keep my right arm on the ground. Right and left are gonna start bent, okay? Now, I'm going to come into a crunch. My, this side that's facing you, which is my right side, is gonna really press down to stabilize me. And my opposite side, my left, is also going to press down. My left foot, pelvis stay down. This arm, I'm gonna crunch. I'm gonna press into my right side. I'm gonna rotate and reach my hand actually to the inside of my right leg. I'm gonna try to push my leg away and resist a little bit and I'm gonna keep this connection. If you need to support your head, go ahead and support it and come back down, okay? So you can be here, you can be here if you need to support the head. Again, we're gonna breathe out, same side. Scoop the abdominals, press into the mat with that right arm, reach, hold, push your leg away, resist. Feel the connection from the left rib going all across to the inside of that right leg. Bring it back down. Hold. Again, come up. If you're on a ball and a roller, this is harder. You can come up onto the ground if you want to. Push, resist, and down. And again, go. Four, push, scoop the belly. Don't push it to the ceiling. Scoop it. And down, last one. Press, same side, push, push. Keep the connection left to right across the body and down. Good, let's switch. So I'm gonna go right side or across, whichever side you're doing is fine. Press the scapula and the arms down, opposite leg and foot and hip down. Now we're gonna go this direction. Breathe out, press into the scapula, rotate, reach, hold. Are you pushing the shoulder down? Are you pushing this pelvis down? Are you feeling the connection of the rib all the way across? Push into that leg, resist. Come down, stay aligned, okay? Stay on your axis. Two, press into the left scapula, rotate, reach. Look just outside your knee. Your head is staying aligned with your sternum. Bring it down. Three, Bring it down, four, hold, push the leg, resist with the leg, look at outside the ribs, press the side, press the side, and five.
and down. Excellent. So this is the line of work that we need to do. Let's take the hands behind the head and let's try to do it side to side from here. It's much harder. Remember the feel of that cross, okay? So you are here, you wanna go from here to here. Feel that line. Hands behind the head, starting again to my right. Open the shoulders wide, elbows can be 45 degrees. Keep them there, we're not pulling the elbows in when we come up. Press into the right scapula, scoop the belly, rotate your armpit or shoulder to the same direction of where you were pressing on the knee. That's the same, stay there. Can you feel your left rib coming across to the inner thigh of this leg? Good, bring it down. Same side, press into right scapula, rotate, open the shoulders, good. Feel that left rib cage. If it doesn't work, if you're feeling the right, Press it to the right side, rotate more. Press it to the right rib, rotate more. Okay, and down. Three. Scoop and lift. And down. Four. Small rotation. Down. And five. And down. Left side. Adjust your pelvis back and press into the left scapula. Keep your head pressing to the hand, press the left scalp and rib, rotate right side to left. Feel it, feel coming across to hip bone or just inside your inner thigh, down. Two, keep pushing the left side down as you rotate the right. Okay, my right hip is also pressing down, so we want to make sure the pelvis is not moving anywhere. I'm assuming that's four. Last one, five. Good, and relax down. Okay, we're going to keep going. How are we doing there? Diagonal press. Now we're going to add the marches to our, crunch, our rotated crunches. So elbows here, and we're going to go crunch and march. Rotate, push your hand against this arm, this leg, press and resist with the leg. Feel the inner thigh working, feel that line. Come down, same side, keep this arm down. Breathe out, march, pelvis is still, scooping the abdominals, reach, rotate, push. Bring it down and go. Rotate, and down, four, march, rotate, down, last one, five, this side is working really hard to stabilize you, the opposite sides, from here to the other side, and down, switch sides, this hand on the mat, press the side down, and we're going to march and rotate, remember you can still support your head if you need to, breathe out, you can be here, and down, Rotating, scoop, stabilize, each side, rotate, push, down, and go, scoop, push, down, nice, four, scoop, support, push, down, feel that, and five, and down. Relax, okay? So we're building up now to do the dead bug. How are, we guys, how are you guys doing? <laughs> so without rotation now, but we're still gonna be working these cross lines that we were working, but now mostly for stability, okay? You guys can see me. So we're going to march the legs up and we're going to do now the toe tap exercise, working with arms a little bit, okay? Before we do it, let me release your arms a little bit. So we're gonna bring the arms to the ceiling and we're gonna release the arms back, keeping the ribs stable. So drag the ribs down as the arm goes up. And bring it back up. Again, breathe out, keep the ribs down. Relax the arms up and up. Good, give me two more. Keep the chest and the ribs pressing into the mat as you release the arms. And up, last one. And up, and here.
Keep the arms to the ceiling, imprint, march the legs up one at a time, imprint again, other one. Now, what we're gonna do is opposition here. So we were doing one leg at a time, right? Now we're gonna drop the leg, so I'm gonna drop my right leg, and I'm gonna drop my opposite arm. Just go as far as you can, okay? Keeping this side and the side that's still up very stable. These sides are very, very stable. So press here. Come back. Let's do the same side to make sure you got it, okay? So we're going to drop, I'm dropping my right leg and left arm, and I'm reaching the opposite ones towards each other and squeezing my leg against the arm for stability. If you feel you can keep going, imprint, push that back fully on the mat as you keep trying to make the movement harder, and then bring it back up. Okay, so again, same side, scoop the abdominals, right leg, left arm go back, and the opposites come towards each other, press them. Here, push, and keep imprinting, imprinting, go as far as you can, bring it back, okay? Same thing to the opposite side. So now I'm gonna go left leg, right arm, so the opposites, and the other two comes towards each other, don't go very far, push, and reach the other two, imprint your spine. Bring it back. And again, breathe out. Push your low back into the mat. Reach the limbs opposite. Go further if you can, but keep pushing the back. The whole idea is to keep that back stable on the mat. And we bring it back. Good, two more. And up. Very good, everyone. And one more. Okay, alternating, but now we're not going to support it. This was giving us a lot of support. We're just going to alternate. So you're going to breathe out, drop the arm and the leg. Remember what the other two are doing to keep stability. If you're not stable, bring it there and stabilize. Bring it back and switch. Okay, so on the roller, this is going to be very difficult. On the ball, probably as well. So make sure that you're doing it on the ground. So scoop, if you don't wanna hold, just keep those other two to the ceiling, okay? Now, if you're feeling comfortable, you can straighten the leg, okay? It's gonna be a little bit more work. So keep anchoring the hip and the scapula of the arms that are reaching to the ceiling. You don't have to do it with straight. Keep it bent, it's fantastic work. They're both, this is just a little bit more challenging. Your back is fully on the mat, okay? So I have one more to do to even things out. And you're gonna hug here, good. Rock side to side. Okay, so we're gonna march the legs down to the ground. So these were just really good core work just to get you to activate. We did our deep core work and then we did our cross systems work. Now, just to end this, because it's gonna come close to an hour, we're going to uh, do some bridges, okay? So I'm gonna work the back of the body a little bit. We're not gonna do rolling bridges, we're gonna do flat back bridges, which is going to work our back muscles a little bit more in stability, okay? So what I want you to do is first, we're gonna imprint again. So you're gonna breathe out, imprint the pelvis. Breathe in, reach forward. Breathe out, imprint. Breathe in, one more. Imprint and neutral. Are we neutral? Now in neutral, you're gonna squeeze your butt. Just squeeze. I don't want you to imprint, I want you to maintain neutral. So the distance between the hip and the rib is not going to change. Squeeze the butt, squeeze the butt, press into the heels, just lift the pelvis slightly off the mat. Good, lengthen the tailbone and the sit bones as long as you can, bring it back down. Okay, and again, press your heel into the mat, press, press until you feel your glutes activating. Now, lift the pelvis, reaching the sit bones down towards your, your legs. 
So maintain that long line. Let's lift a little bit higher. Bring your back down. Tailbone touches. Good. Keep the pressure on the heels. Keep your knees straight up. Press and lift. Now you're lifting and you're reaching everything forward so we're not rounding. Okay, you're shifting. Now shift your knees forward to the wall in front of you. Shift the sit bones to your calves. Shift your tailbone to the wall. Connect, hug towards each other, not up and down. So hip bone hugs towards belly button, ribs hug. Are we here? Stay here. Press into the heels. Squeeze the butt more. Just squeeze, don't round the pelvis. Melt the chest and the ribs. Press the scapulas on and the arms down so we're not pushing from the rib cage. It's all in the glute. Okay, reach forward and down. I want you to touch only your tailbone down. Just the tailbone touches down, hinge from your hips. Tap, press heel, squeeze butt, shift the knees forward. Keep reaching everything forward. Forward, go a little higher if you can. Forward, forward, hold. Make sure you're pressing through the heels. Both glutes are working, your hips are level, your ribs are down, chest, scapulas, press down like you're doing a crunch, abs tight, we're holding here, stay here, keep shifting, the knees forward, now pull your heels towards your shoulders, pull the heels towards the shoulders and keep reaching the knees forward, keep this connection, come down, reaching forward, only the tailbone, Touches, so you're hinging from here. Tailbone, tailbone, tap, lift. Shift, shift forward, forward, reach, reach, hold. Pull your heels towards your butt, you should feel it more. Pull it, pull it. Abs tight, connect the hips, connect the ribs. Don't let your knees collapse. All toes pressing, big toe pressing quite a bit. Shift the heels more to the shoulders. Lift a little bit more just from the butt, right here. Bring it straight down, just the tailbone anchors. Straight down, lift, shift, shift, shift. Tailbone taps, press into the heel, lift. Let's do 10, lift, come down. Breathe out, shift, shift, lift, lift, lift. You're lengthening the longest line from the hips, tailbone only. Three, this doesn't move, down. Yeah, can you see all that work here? Four. Down. Woo, I want to cramp. Five. I cramped. <laughs> Down. Good. Six. Squeeze and shift forward, lengthen. Down. Seven. Down. Eight. Don't move anything on that upper body. Down. Nine. Press into the heel. Shift forward. Down. Ten. Stay up, tiny pulses. One, two, just from the butt. Three, abs tight. Four, this is working really hard. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Bring it in. Ooh, hug your knees. We're not done. We have marches, rock side to side. Okay, so we're gonna march from this. If you're really tired, so give you a number four stretch here. Otherwise, legs go back down. We're gonna come up and we're gonna to march. So bring your feet maybe a little closer together, but keep still just inside the hip bone. Let's go all the way up. So engage everything, press it to the heels and lift, okay? Go as high as you're comfortable. Down here, it's going to be more stable. Just make sure we're not rounding, we're lengthening. So we're still in that neutral position. We're going to stabilize left side or whichever side you want. Keep the hips level and float this leg up. Now, keep the connection of this hip to this rib, the leg that went up, and come back down. Chest and ribs pressing down. Stabilize the side, lift the opposite hip, and really float that leg up without dropping the hips. And bring it back down, okay? And again, this hip, I usually try to shift it up to make sure it doesn't drop when I float the leg up. And down, scapulas, chest, and ribs pressing down. Three. This is my unstable side. <laughs> Four. Keep that hip, both hips up and level. Good. Chest and ribs pressing down. Little bit of a tuck if you're feeling anything on your low back. Down. Seven. 
down. Eight. Go at your own pace, okay? Just make sure that you're not losing it. Nine. I like to breathe out to come up. You can breathe in. Ten. Good. Stay here. Lengthen. Stabilize everything. We're going to roll down. So from up here, scoop and roll slowly, slowly. Mobilize that spine. Oh, let's do one more rolling up and down. Breathe out, scoop, imprint, round the pelvis. Slowly peel the spine off the mat, only as high as you want. Reach everything into that nice neutral position. Breathe out from here, from the chest and the esophagus, one ball at a time, goes back down. Hug your knees, rock side to side. Cross the legs. Pull in into your number four stretch. If you want to do a pigeon stretch, you can. Here, make sure that your tailbone stays down, ladies. So if you need to keep your leg down to stretch here, that's fine. If you want to prop the leg on top of blocks or something, fine. But when you pull, don't round the back. It's not good for your back. So keep the tailbone down. Hands behind the thigh. Push with the elbow. Pull the leg in. Okay? Three. I'm gonna leave you stretching too. Cross one leg over the other, so eagle legs if you want. I like to open my knees wide and then bring my, my legs to my chest. Release, and then let's do the left leg. Cross over or the other leg, pull in. I'm going really fast, but you guys can really take your time with these stretches. Again, tailbone is anchored. We're not rounding the pelvis. Let hand behind the thigh, push the knee away if you want to. Keep your pelvis squared and forward and pull in. Okay, so usually I like to bring this leg a little bit to the inside of my body. It helps me square my pelvis a little bit more. Okay, and then you can do your eagle legs. Just cross knee to knee and pull to chest. And release all right I'm gonna rock up okay so it was super basic class today um, I'm gonna do the same basics tomorrow but tomorrow actually we're gonna go into all fours we're gonna do back work so we're gonna do the extensions so we're gonna do the breathing and stability and the opposites on our on fours then back work depending how we go with that we're gonna start with scapular work and then if we finish tomorrow, great. If not, the next day is going to be all upper body. So planks, scapulas, arms, all that stuff. So I'm breaking everything down back to basics again for us to get it. Anyways, you can always challenge these things with the ball and rollers. Like I said, these are the best exercises ever. They're my favorite. I love these. That's why I took so long doing them. But at least you guys, in case you had any questions about it, you should be able to now... Try to find your neutral easier and try to really go deep into that core, okay? These are the best, best exercises to get you back in alignment. So, thank you for joining me today. Thank you. You guys at home too. <laughs>